Well, for more on the mystery still surrounding JFK's assassination, I'd like to welcome in James Rovinall. James is the author of a recent piece in Vanity Fair on this very topic. Uh, James, thank you so much for being here. Here it is, the 17th. We are quickly approaching uh, this very fateful anniversary. All these years later, why is there still so much mystery surrounding JFK's death? Well, I think I, I just was at this conference with Professor Thompson and other people who are considered scholars in the area. And, you know, there, there is no murder mystery greater than this one. And it just gets more and more complicated as time goes by and as we know more facts. Um, there was a very cursory investigation by the Warren Commission. They wanted to conclude it quickly and put behind them what everybody worried about, which was provoking another, a nuclear war. I mean, remember, we had just come out of the Cuban Missile Crisis. So they were moving fast, and a lot of what they concluded has turned out to be wrong. And I think that, you know, a number of people over the years have been working hard to try to get at the truth, but it is one of the most complicated cases I've ever seen. So um, that that has a lot to do with why it's still alive today. Absolutely. And, and James, we're going to go to breaking news in a moment. But before we do, you know, there's this new information that, that, that the, the wound on the president's neck was possibly an interest, entrance wound. Um, do you think we'll ever really, truly know what happened that fateful day? I think we'll get closer. The, the person I've been working with is Paul Landis, who was a direct witness to the assassination in Dallas on halfback, the Secret Service car, and then went to Parkland and helped Jackie Kennedy get up to leave the limousine. He found an intact bullet behind her on the top of the seat, um, which everybody believed to be a bullet that had gone through Kennedy, through the front of his neck, and then into Governor Conley, breaking bones and so forth. Everybody thought that was ridiculous because the, the bullet simply had no, no substantial damage to it. So him finding that and finally reporting this 60 years later in his book that just came out, The Final Witness, um, will begin, I think, a time when people need to digest this and see how does this fit with the evidence. I personally think that it means it's much more likely there were multiple shooters um, in Dallas that day than in the past as a result of this revelation. Yeah, it's certainly a theory that, that has uh, sustained itself throughout the decades at this point. All right, James Rovenault, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.